Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about pretending to like what you do. So let's get into it. <laughs> so the question in question was, Frederick, I'm curious on your thoughts on the differences between number one, pretending to enjoy the work that you do when you actually don't really like it, and number two, putting on a mask to make yourself more likable and easy to work with. And in order to, to to seem like a better uh, culture fit for the company. If these two are different, what suggestion do you have for someone struggling with the first? I feel like the first one, in other words, pretending to enjoy that you, wor that you enjoy the work that you do, is a lot harder for an individual uh, uh, with the issues that, uh, to, uh, with the issues stated. Uh, and it seems to be a lot easier to mask. But, but it seems to be a lot more easier to mask. So, uh, the good news for you is that pretending to enjoy what you enjoy the work that you do is a uh, it has a lower requirement in IT than the social aspect. It usually is a lot. Uh, it's very. It's a lot harder if you have it the other way around. Usually, the people who can fake that they're a better culture fit than they are are the ones who will have the easiest time. Now, I will just, for the sake of saying this, because I feel like I have to, because uh, I don't want you to think I, 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 I I'm, I'm going to push my own agenda a little bit here, and I will say that I think that overall you want to find a place of work where you actually enjoy doing the job or being part of that environment because it can be completely soul destroying to do something you don't like and be with people you, that you don't really enjoy working with for an extended period of time uh, now i know that that is very idealistic for me to say and it's very utopian for a lot of people because th i'm very sorry to say that the vast majority of people uh, go to work every day without necessarily liking what they do uh, and I'm not just talking about IT here I'm just talking globally but uh, I really encourage you uh, to try because uh, at least from my experience there is nothing like there's a practically nothing you will do as a normal average person like in terms of work and so forth I mean you're gonna spend a very big part of your life in a professional environment and doing work and, and so forth and uh, take it from me uh, if you trust me enough, that is too much time to spend being miserable. That's actually what I feel about it. If you have no choice, you have no choice, but really try to fix this because it's such a big part of your life that uh, suffering or being unhappy for that amount of time, it will affect you uh, in many cases. Uh, so be careful with that. But with that said, the good news is, as I said, it's a lot it's a lot easier for you to get by if you're good at faking that you are a good culture fit than it is for you to fake the, uh, the, the or the, like the requirements are lower when it comes to do, doing the thing that you uh, doing the work you see most companies they don't actually care well, they do, of course, on a conscious level, but they can't really evaluate it. It's almost impossible for practically every single company to figure out if a developer actually enjoys coding or not. Assuming, of course, that the work is there, like the results. If you can produce the results and if the system works, there is really nothing that they can do to figure out just how good those results are and how good they would have been if you really cared. There's usually a mix of developers. So I know that you've heard, most likely you've heard the term rockstar developer. And you see, this is what all the companies are trying to find. The reason why they're trying to find rockstar programmers is because this norm is literally that you have developers who can do the job, but they don't really care about the code. And that is a big, problem in management it is a big 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 problem because it's the this is the thing that makes uh, the really big corporations and so forth that's what makes them slow down it makes it it's very costly because you you have edu workers who are not educating themselves in an industry where things are moving all the time so you can't really trust that they're making the right decisions on behalf of your company because at the end of the day you're hiring these people to do something that you don't really understand so 
you really need to be able to trust that they will keep things you know to keep their uh, their senses tingling and like be alert and like look out for new innovations and come with suggestions and be in innovative and um, and um, dr a driving force because that is the thing that is most benefit that's going to give you the most amount of money that's the thing that actually Google and Facebook and these sort of companies that's what they have that's what all the other companies want it's, uh, we can talk about why that is practically impossible for most companies, but that's what they want. The problem is that they have no way of telling, usually, or at the very least they're not even willing to invest in the sort of, in, uh, make the sort of investments that are needed to figure this out. They don't actually know if that's the case. I, all you really have to do is to, pre um, I'm not saying that you should do this, but basically pretend that you love coding on your for, yeah, when you're in the interviewing stage and then keep in some cases you can just dive directly in or you can just do, make an initial investment of a show a show you can basically show uh, showcase that yeah you care about the thing you do and then before you know it and this happens whether you like it or not in many cases uh, you can kind of start relaxing uh, and this happens both with people who are going in with the mindset that this is how I want to do my job, like I want to be a code monkey. And it also even it even happens with people who are really, they start out really enthusiastic because the thing is, guys, it is really, really, really hard to find a developer, I would say any person, who can uh, who will not only be enthusiastic when something is fresh and new or when they're starting something, but also to maintain that when that thing that they've been doing is now actually kind of boring it's really hard i would say that is my own impossible so even if you have really enthusiastic rockstar developers you have nothing they, they have a life cycle before you know it most of them will go from being enthusiastic to just not really caring anymore because the the project i've been been working here for a few years now and they kind of yeah, they're not as hungry anymore, and they're not as enthusiastic anymore, and so forth. And now you, I, but you can't really fire them anyway, because as I said, you can't really evaluate if they're writing the best code that they could possibly produce, or just something that's going to work. You have, uh, it's extremely hard to tell that at the code level. So that is something that if you can, I mean, if you're struggling with that part, it should be fairly easy because most of the time you don't actually have to be as engaged as you f might think that you need to be. It's harder in a if you're in a, like a startup or something like that, or you have some very technical people around you who really do pay attention to this sort of stuff. Uh, it's still easier, but uh, in that environment, it might be harder. But the social thing is a different thing because social friction is the worst thing. For like, that's something that everybody can feel. Uh, I would even go as far as to say that most managers they evaluate the productivity and effectiveness not just at the technical level. You know that people say that you should be data driven. Most come. I will go as far as to say that most managers are gut feeling driven, where if they have a team of people who have a fairly poisonous environment like where they don't really work with so well, all that well together they never talk to each other no nothing like that that is going to be a bigger concern to the manager that's something that they can feel than that one or two of them aren't like pushing it to the max and going on tech talks and like all this stuff uh, so if it, it being a uh, faking if you have to do that and people do this all the time especially in the startups i've seen this a hundred times where you have like these really super enthusiastic idealistic ma uh, managers or uh, founders who basically just force everybody into these um, situations where everybody has to be like super energetic and super engaged and so forth and so forth and I mean the vast majority of people as soon as the meeting starts or the get together or the whatever party it is okay they go and they party and then the minute that like, they have they can drop the mask they go back to just being the regular old people that they used to be but they will they will play the game uh, because they feel like they have to because and in many cases they have to because if they don't play the game in uh, during these situations uh, they're gonna get a uh, they're, they're gonna get a meeting uh, or request for feedback as uh, some people like to call it can I give you some feedback nobody's ever given feedback that doesn't mean dude you did something bad 
we need to talk about your your behavior or your performance or something like that so what I want you to take away from this is that if you're struggling with working in an environment where you feel like you have to pretend that you enjoy the work that you do I really first and foremost urge you find a place of work where you actually like to work you're gonna spend so many hours as a professional and you're gonna work for so many years that I feel like it's a little bit of a waste for you to spend that time being unhappy if there's if, if there's even a chance that you can avoid it but if you are in that environment and you're struggling with proving to people that you enjoy the work that you do you should be you can count yourself lucky because it's usually easier to be a little bit unenthusiastic about the actual coding because the norm is actually like the average programmer they're not pushing it to the max they're not going to all the tech talks and doing all that stuff they are just people who are like they're producing code and there's really no way for a company to evaluate if you're an enthusiastic super coder unless you do like these social things like going to tech talks and hosting uh, hosting things and like doing all these social things it's really hard to tell if you, you're dealing with a person who really likes coding or someone who doesn't like it because the way we see it is in the social environment usually and uh, it, it's uh, very hard for a manager to see it any other way and so if you're able to do the thing that really matters which is to put on the social mask that we all have to put on to just accommodate all the other people who are not intelligent enough to understand how the world actually works and try to adjust accordingly well then do that because literally every single human being who's ever wanted to get anywhere within a a group has to to at certain point play the game and if you can play it, it's a lot more important for you to be able to s be play the social game and be a good time uh, to be someone who is okay to work with uh, than it is to pretend that you love coding above all else because if you can't if the social thing becomes a problem most managers as I said they're gut driven in other words if you create social problems that's going to be a much bigger warning flag or a warning signal to most people than that you don't go to every learning lunch or go to every tech talk have a great day